Good morning, Anderson astronauts. Today is, I forgot what day it is. That's what happens when you stay home all the time, almost all the time. So today is Thursday, April 23rd, and we only have about 25 days left of school. So keep learning, keep growing. We love seeing your videos and seeing what you are doing at home. One of my favorite things to do is watch baby animals. And some of you may have seen this little duck right back here. That was the clue. One baby animal I love watching is puppies. Another baby animal that I like watching are kittens. And of A cool thing that has happened since we've been staying home is one of my teacher friends lives on a farm and instead of being at school, she was able to be at home and watch her baby ducks hatch out of eggs. And she sent me some video and some pictures. So let's watch her baby ducks first. And then we're going to read a very, very old, cool book called Make Way for Ducklings. Come on. Come on. Okay, I only got five with you. Where's the fourth one? Where's the sixth one? I mean? Where's number six? Is Wednesday not able to get out? Let's go back and get Wednesday in a minute. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on, buddy. You want to go down the ramp? No? You're going to go down like everybody else? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You want to go over to the ramp? There you go. There you go. Come down the ramp. Wednesday, 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 come this way, come this way, Wednesday, no, don't jump off of there, Wednesday, Wednesday, come here. She loves to swim. <laughs> Look at her swim. Good job, Marna. <laughs> Aren't they cute? I just love seeing those little ducks. I love how they roll down the stairs and they're trying to catch up with their mom and they just fall all over each other. So 
Today we're going to read Make Way for Ducklings, and this book is from before I was born, and my parents and teachers used to read this book to me. The pictures are not in color, but they're very, very interesting. Also, while I read, I want you to watch the baby ducks in this book and think how they are alike or different from the baby ducks you just saw. Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McCloskey. This book was written in 1941. This book was written during World War II. That's so cool. Make Way for Ducklings. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were looking for a place to live. But every time Mr. Mallard saw what looked like a nice place, Mrs. Mallard said it was no good. There were sure to be foxes in the woods or turtles in the water. And, when, and she was not going to raise a family where there might be foxes or turtles because they eat eggs. So they flew on and on. When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any further. There was a nice pond in the public garden with a little island on it the very place to spend the night. The very place to spend the night, quacked Mrs. Mallard. So down they flapped. I wonder if they're going to go to that island. Next morning, they fished for their breakfast in the mud at the bottom of the pond, but they didn't find much. Just as they were getting ready to start on their way, a strange, enormous bird came by. It was pushing a boat full of people, and there was a man sitting on the back. Good morning, quacked Mr. Mallard, being polite. The big bird was too proud to answer. Mr. Mallard was trying to talk to this. Is that a real bird? But the people on the boat threw peanuts into the water. So the mallards followed them all around the pond and they got another breakfast, better than the first. I like this place, said Mrs. Mallard as they climbed out onto the bank and waddled along. Boys and girls, the bank is not a bank where you put money. The bank is the side of a pond or a lake or a river. So just know that there are two kinds of banks. That's a homof homonym, kind of like there are two kinds of bats. They climbed on the bank and waddled along. Why don't we build a nest and raise our duck ducklings right in this pond? There are no foxes and no turtles and the people feed us peanuts. What could be better? Good, said Mr. Mallard, delighted that Mrs. Mallard had finally found a place that suited her. But, Look out, squawked Mrs. Mallard, all of a dither. You'll run, you'll get run over. And when she got her breath, she added, this is no place for babies. Well, with all those horrid things rushing about, we'll have to look elsewhere. They don't know what that is, but, yep, that happens in parks. So they flew over Beacon Hill and around the state house, but there was no place there. They looked in Louisburg Square, but there was no water to swim in. Then they flew over the Charles River. This is better, quacked Mr. Mallard. That island looks like a nice quiet place and it's only a little way from the public garden. Yes, said Mrs. Mallard, remembering the peanuts. That looks just like the right place to hatch ducklings. So, they chose a cozy spot among the bushes near the water and settled down to build their nest. And only just in time, for now they were beginning to molt. Friends, when ducks molt, it means they lose their feathers. They get ready to change for the season. All their old wing feathers started to drop out and they would not be able to fly again until the new feathers grew in. 
but of course they could swim and one day they swam over to the park on the riverbank and there they met a policeman called Michael. Michael fed them peanuts and after that the Mallards called on Michael every day. After Mrs. Mallard had laid eight eggs in the nest, she couldn't go visit Michael anymore because she had to sit on the eggs to keep them warm. She moved off of the nest only to get a drink of water or to have her lunch or to count her eggs and be sure they were all still there. One day the ducklings hatched. First came Jack and then Cack and then Lack, and then Mac, and then Knack, and then Oak, and Pack, and Quack. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were bursting with pride. It was a great responsibility taking care of so many ducklings, and it kept them very busy. Let's count the ducks. One, two, whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One day, Mr. Mallard decided that he'd take a trip to see what else, to see what the rest of the river was like further on. So off he set. I'll meet you in a week in the public garden, he quacked over his shoulder. Take good care of the ducklings. Don't you worry, Mrs. Mallard said. I know all about bringing up children. And she did. She taught them how to swim and dive. She taught them how to walk in a line to come where they were when they were called and to keep a safe distance from bikes and scooters and other things with wheels. When at last she felt perfectly satisfied with them, she said one morning, come along children, follow me. And before you could wink an eyelash, Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Oak, Pack, and Quack fell into line just as they had been taught. Mrs. Mallard led the way into the water and they swam behind her to the opposite bank. There they waded ashore and waddled along until they came to a highway. Ooh, uh oh, it's going to get dangerous. Mrs. Mallard stepped out to cross the road. Onk, onk went the horns on the speeding cars. Quack, went Mrs. Mallard as she tumbled back again. Quack, 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 went Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Oak, Pack, and Quack, just as loud as their little quackers could quack. The cars kept speeding by and honking, and Mrs. Mallard and the ducks kept right on quack, quack, quacking. Very cool cars. They made such a noise that Michael came running and he, wave, he was waving his arms and blowing his whistle. Tweet! Onk! Quack, quack, quack! He planted himself in the center of the road, raised one hand to stop the traffic, and then beckoned with the other, the way policemen do, for Mrs. Mallard and her ducklings to cross over. As soon as Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings, ducklings were safe on the other side and on their way down Mount Vernon Street, Michael pushed, oh, Michael rushed back to his police booth. He called Clancy at headquarters and he said, there's a family of ducks walking down the street. Family of what? Clancy yelled. Ducks, yelled Michael. Send a police car, quick. Meanwhile, Mrs. Mallard had reached the corner bookshop and she turned on to Charles Street with Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Nap, Oak, Pack, and Quack all marching along in line behind her. They're so cute. Everyone stared. An old lady from Beacon Hill said, isn't it amazing? And an old man who swept the street said, well, now ain't that nice. And when Mrs. Mallard heard them, she was so proud, she tipped her nose in the air and walked along with an extra swing in her waddle.
When they went to this, when they came to the corner of Beacon Street, there was the police car with four policemen that Clancy had sent from headquarters. The policemen held back on the traffic so Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings could march across the street. Look at that. And right into the public garden. Inside the gate, they all turned around to say thank you to the policeman. The policeman smiled and waved goodbye. <laughs> when they reached the pond and swam across to the little island, there was Mr. Mallard waiting for them, just as he had promised. They went to see their dad. The ducklings liked the new island so much that they decided to live there all day long. They followed the swan boats and ate peanuts. And, at, and when night falls, they swim to their little island and go to sleep. And that's the end. What a cool book. It's been a long time since I've read that book. So, if you can, write down some ways that those ducks acted like the baby ducks in my friend's farm. Tell us some rhyming words also from the story. I noticed something while I was reading this book to you. I noticed that the Baby duck's names were Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Oak, Whoop, and Pack and quack. Watch what the author did. J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q. They are in alphabetical order. Let's read them again. Ready? Read with me. Jack, cack, lack, mack, knack, oak, pack, and quack. Last boys and girls, go see if you can find ways that the baby ducks in the book were the same as my friend's baby ducks on her farm. Send me photos or send me your ideas or ask your parents to send me a video. I hope you're having fun and doing well and please give your parents a hug and tell them you love them. Tomorrow, we're going to read a chapter out of Be Your Own Superhero. Some of you have told me you really want this book and to see what it's about. So until tomorrow, bye. Okay, come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> go for a walk. Yeah, we're going for a walk. <laughs> hey, babies. <laughs>